Welcome everyone to Taking Over Episode 9. I am the unmuted Chris Parrish alongside my co-host, The Natural, Astro Pizarro. Don't worry, I don't mess this up. I'm the one that actually gets it now. Excuse Ash- me. You're such a professional now. Well, no, that's a shot at like Cody and Bobby because they always get it wrong. So. <laughs> uh, Astrid, how are you doing today? I'm tired, but I'm good. How are you? I'm doing a little bit of all right. I am very energetic because I, well, one, banged out an energy drink like, as we were watching NXT. So I, I'm a little kicking out of that. But this is also a great uh, episode of NXT tonight. We actually had some wrestling, which was really, really nice. Like when, when I say that, they gave some matches some time tonight. Yeah, they really did. Yeah, so like before we get started, like anything standing out uh, from your end or anything that you were happy with? I think definitely uh, it's going to surprise people, but Axiom and JD, I feel like that match was incredible. Like that was probably my match of the night aside from the ladies. Yeah, I loved watching it. I will definitely watch it again, though. Yeah, I thought uh, even then, like uh, the matches that were advertised, I'm going to say, like the... uh, the JD versus Axum, even though. Hello, hello, Sean Cena 92. How are you doing? How did you enjoy tonight's edition of NXT? Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for pulling up a stool at our local establishment. How was your night going? Let us know in the chat. And let us know what your favorite part of tonight's episode of NXT was. Um, but yeah, no, uh, whether it was the Joe Gacy, uh, Cameron Grimes, whether it was the women's tag team uh, championship match, whether it was, and I know they uh, announced it kind of like yesterday, but yeah, JD and uh, and Axiom, um, they all had time tonight. And I thought even with the other complimentary matches that were pre-advertised, like to, uh, Stacks against, uh, no, who was it again? Uh, I'm trying to remember. See, this is why I don't do notes because I just go too much on them. Um, but yeah, we have power. Yeah, it's the power hour. Actually, tonight we actually had happy hour too, which is actually fantastic. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, Hank Walker, yeah, it was Stacks against Hank Walker. Even they had uh, some time too. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, I like the fact that they allowed the matches to breathe. And for once, we didn't get a lot of inter promos between the entrances. That was yeah. cut down. I was very happy about that. Did you notice that? Yeah, there was like I feel like the interviews were like short too. They didn't take mm-hmm. that much, even backstage. So that was nice to see too. Yeah. Um, starting off, we had Schism right off the bat. Uh, episode starts. And they are making their way out uh, with their masks. They had messages on their masks. We couldn't really see what they were, but what was nice is that. There is a formation of schism now, uh, and it was absolutely amazing to see Joe Gacy is sporting trunks, more like the the look he had when he was on the independent scene prior to WWE, Uh, a little different. Uh, What did you think about Joe Gacy and trunks? I told you. I was so surprised that it took me a moment to realize it was him because of the (laughs) trunks. Uh, no, I'm definitely not used to it, but at the same time, I, I like that it's something different, and it also kind of gives you that insight of like, there's a change within Schism now that they have Ava there, and like now they feel complete. So that it's nice to see that change in him as a you know as a character in the ring as well, with starting with his trunks. Yeah, um, and I like it because it now gives him that that look. Uh, they were design trunks that you say Casey on the buttocks. Um, and they have a little bit of a design on the front, which I'm going to assume is probably a schism design of some sort. Um, but I very much just like the fact that Joe Gacy is fully himself again. Um, and Sean Cena coming in, I found it strange that Gacy was in trunks, so used to what he used to wear. And that's something that, yeah, like I know when guys change their looks or when anybody changes their uh, like attire, um, it's going to feel a little different. Um, I'm wondering too, if maybe with the addition of Hank uh, Walker on the, uh, uh, on the, on the roster, he kind of wears stuff similar to what Joe Gacy wore. So I'm wondering if that had anything to do with Joe Gacy switching it up, or if it's just a matter of Joe Gacy wanted to, uh, 
have more of his look on the in, uh, independent scene. But, uh, man, this was a great match between him and Cameron Grimes. Uh, the intensity right off the bat was exactly, I think, the intensity that we were hoping Roxana and Cora would have shown throughout their feud. Uh, but in regards to this, they just brought it to each other. I loved it. I am still amazed by how athletic Joe Gacy is for a bigger man. Uh, what were your thoughts about this match and what stood out for you about it? Cause I loved the, I personally just loved the fact that this just felt like a main event match right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not only that, but it also felt like that ending to the story between them, which is which I hope that's it. And it just like yeah, gave you like the closure of like this is it between them. So if this is over between them, I'm like satisfied with it with this ending. So more than anything, I just kept thinking if this is the end, that's a good way to end it and to leave that exclamation point at the end for it as well. Um, but yeah, I love the action between them. So I'm glad that this is the type of match that we got for their final showdown. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm part of me is convinced that maybe this isn't the final showdown, but at the very mm -hmm. same time, uh, I'm okay with it, despite the fact that Cameron Grimes did not pick up the victory. Um, normally, we're used to uh, the good guy getting the victory to close out a feud, but in this case, we saw Schism or Dyad as the tag team FO. Uh, it's still hard for me to call them something other than the Grizzled Young Vets. I really like uh, them. But uh, needless to say, it's uh, it was nice to see them kind of get involved, but they weren't the actual reason to how Gacy got the ultimate advantage. It was Ava Rain, and I thought that was a beautiful touch to this match. I thought it was absolutely amazing that they got her in there and absolutely set right away that she is an impact player to the group. There was an exact reason why she's there. And that reason is she can change the game at any place. And I love that. I loved how she got physically involved. Even if it was something as small as just pushing Grimes off the top rope. Mm -hmm. And that got that distraction enough and changed the momentum of the match to allow Gacy to hit a springboard clothesline uh, to pick up the victory. Uh, your thoughts on not only JC getting the, or Joe Gacy, JC. Uh, yeah, there's Jason Jane who's there later, sure. Yeah. Uh, but it, Joe Gacy not only picking up the win, but Ava Rain actually getting, for the first time, physically involved on NXT. I like that because I kept thinking about it this way. First, the Daya gets involved and Cameron just goes after them. And the distraction is not enough for uh, Gacy to win but the assistance from Ava is what was the exclamation points for that ending. So I like that detail of like, it wasn't the guys that gave him the victory. It was more with Ava and that detail there. So I like that point of it when you look at it from that end of it. But I, I loved how it looked. And not only to show like he has backup, but she's there too. Even her as a woman, she's still there to get that assistance if needed. So I like that she was the major point to this victory that he had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we're getting, uh, I guess, the owners of our of our local establishment saying hello. So better be on our uh, most crazy behavior because, well, anything goes. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then I, Mighty Joe, Joe Morin coming in. Hello to you. How are you doing today? Uh, glad to see you back on Turnbuckle Talk that you uh, people would have been able to see prior to just a, about an hour or so ago here at, or uh, at, not at, at local establishment, our local establishment, Twitch, not too long ago. I can't speak, apparently. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, um, what do you think is next for Joe Gacy and uh, Schism? To be honest, is this the first time I think it's something like this that I really don't know because I feel like usually when something like this happens they kind of give you an interaction with somebody else backstage some mm -hmm. kind of fight or some kind of argument anything like that to like give you that hint of like this is the next person that it's going against them and I feel like I didn't see that tonight so I, it kept me wondering like what's really next for them or is it just Cameron going back to them now with more backup perhaps but aside from Cameron, there was no other interaction with anybody else through this whole episode. Yeah, and I kind of liked, in a way, when we were talking about is this the finale, I liked how there was closure, at the very least, if that is. Uh, they didn't ju immediately jump in at something. 
But if I was to make a guess, I'm either thinking Gallus could be a very smart choice, or if they were to add a third, JBBJ could be a very good one, and then you could do Ava Rain against Fact or or Helen Henley, which I think could be interesting. Um, but I don't. Know, I guess we will see. Uh, we then kind of went straight into uh, a promo with uh, Nathan Frazier walking out of medical, uh, apparently sustaining uh, some injuries from his ladder match uh, there. So, oh, and then Sean Cena, before I even go, John Cena, my guess is Gacy goes after Wesley and Jagger and Rip go after pretty deadly. Um, yeah, that's, that, I don't, I, I would love to see Jagger and Rip as tag team champions eventually. Like that is mm-hmm. something I think needs to happen. Um, but yeah. So I don't know. Uh, your, your thoughts on, uh, on, on this one. That one's a tough one. Cause I feel like it will take maybe a week or two for Wesley and Gacy because he's facing Cam- uh, I was going to say Cameron Carmelo um, in two weeks. So I feel like if anything does happen, they're just maybe planting seeds for the next two weeks up until Wes has the victory over Carmelo, and then after that, maybe. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious. Like, who would actually be like? Would you do flat pretty deadly against uh, Rip and Fowler, or would you uh, have somebody else in that way? Because I just don't know if you want to have the two heels, like two heel teams, mm-hmm. going. But it would be interesting if you want to mm-hmm. turn pretty deadly babyface, which I would not be against. Because I think uh, between both groups, I feel like the crowd will kind of cheer on pretty deadly, so they will feel like faces if they were to face off against Zadaya, perhaps. So that yeah. could be also a possibility if it if it does end up happening. Yeah, very interesting. That's a really good comment, Sean Cena. Keep them coming. Uh, again, uh, we are then at the Nathan Frazier coming out of medical, and Axiom is waiting on the other side, seeing kind of just how uh, how he is, what the guess was, like what's the update. And uh, sounds like Nathan Frazier is still going to be out a couple weeks. And this promptly brings up J.D. McDonough, who uh, kind of laughs and says, oh, I guess uh, making fun of axioms, I guess, a knowledge of the human body. And says, well, you don't really know about that four-letter word, pain. He's like, eh, that looks like more like a severe uh, neck strain. One is maybe your C4. And then, like, doing a lot of medical uh, hypothesis as you will, about the injury. Yeah, I know some words, I guess. Um, but yeah, but it also kind of just set up Axiom and uh, JD, as you were quite impressed with Axiom's ability to speak. Uh, was it more or less you were impressed with his abilities to speak or just the his uh, flu, fluency in English? Yeah, that's, it was more like it because I think about it from my bilingual brain. <laughs> and not only that, but also like, he did. I didn't hear much of an accent from him, and he expressed himself very well. So I was really impressed by him and the way he was talking. Uh, so just like that's something that I caught while I was listening to him, because I, I guess I go back to my bilingual brain, and you can expect some kind of accent, especially that he's Spanish. But I didn't hear anything. He sounded very well. So, yeah. Uh, hey, hey, uh, Ed had to run uh, errands and haven't caught NXT. We'll watch the VOD later. You should. It was a great show. Uh, you did get a, a couple, uh, as we go, quote unquote, thirst traps from uh, your faves. So you, you want to definitely watch. Um, but yeah, um, more or less a segment just continuing to build uh, the eventual match later with JD and Axiom, which, uh, yeah, got me very excited as soon as I heard this because anybody who watched Axiom in NXT UK as a kid. And anything JD McDonough did, it was fantastic. So, very curious. And then, uh, then we kind of see uh, Nikita and Zoe arrive to the building. Hence, this is the first thirst trap for you, Ed. So, you definitely want to watch that <laughs> for your thing. Um, and then we go to a directly another promo, which is a barbershop promo for the first time. You were so mesmerized of finding the address of the place that I think you missed a good chunk of what they were saying. You make me sound like a stalker. Jeez. Well, I that's, mean. I just wanted to know how far it was from me. Is that so bad? <laughs> Maybe I can find Carmel on the way there. But, uh, yeah. On. 
but Trick pretty much was uh, trying to talk to Mello about how, you know, he didn't win the title. He like, what's next? And Carmel's like, yeah, I, I hear the chatter and blah, blah, blah. He's like, but I got to give Wesley a little bit of credit. He, he brought it and uh, he earned it. Uh, but, you know, he has business to face. Uh, like, you know, basically saying he's not finished with Wesley. And even though he was the, uh, the most What's the right word? I wouldn't say best because I think that's more opinionated, but he was the most relevant champion of the last year. <laughs> Carl and Turnbull talk about <laughs> as Detective Pizarro. Oh, no. Ooh, Ooh you're no. the DP. Uh oh. <laughs> I mean, I do find the names of the people before you do, so that helps. It was one chick. No, it hasn't been just one person. Yeah. Don't go. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, and you didn't even remember where you found it <laughs> initially with the Ava Rain one. So. Yeah. Mm. Um. But yeah, no. Basically, saying like yeah, like basically continuing uh, the uh, the fact that he still wants Wesley. Uh, he was the most relevant relevant champion in NXT for the last year. Uh, He was the A champion of the brand, uh, despite the fact Braun Breaker was the champion for the majority of the time as well. Um, So, yeah, basically, yeah, basically saying, yeah, eventually we will get a match between Wesley and uh, Carmelo Hayes. But other than that, it was, I don't know, it was nice to finally see the barbershop come back. Mm -hmm. Um, So I like this uh, segment. It'd be cool if more people on the show, like whether it's friends of them, like it would be cool if they came onto the barbershop as well and it became a little bit more of a regular thing, but who's to say? Um, and then we get a a promo from Scripps. But before we get to that, what were your thoughts on all these promos? Because this was a very promo heavy beginning after this match. Mm-hmm. And I felt like they were, like, for example, with the one with uh, Trick Mello at the barbershop is something that it was setting up for the match in two weeks. So it makes sense the way they did it, uh, especially the way he talks about Wesley. It does set up the match between them, so I feel like it's still important for us to watch it and to have it. And he even said, he's like, you, he hasn't beat me, so he's not the HM, even him with the championship. So yeah. I like that part of it. But I just, like, we need that build up. And if they're not facing each other, might as well have a promo and an interview to promote the contract signing that they, uh, they mentioned for next week, I think. And yeah. then the championship match in two weeks. So it does make sense for them to do this. And Scripps has already been doing promos, so it makes sense for it to continue this way too. Yeah, and uh, again, like I was right into the Scripps promo. And uh, do you have the words of that on you right away? Because if not, okay. I... Okay, perfect. Uh, <laughs> did you want to go ahead and read what it was this week? Yeah. So it says, my name is written on the walls. My voice sounds through the halls. And soon I'll be in NXT, but to watch the whole thing fall. Pain is truly among thee. Imagine what would happen has happened as it always was meant to be. Sincerely, Scripps. And the the difference between this one, it wasn't the phone call uh, Mm -hmm. kind of graphic we saw. This was throughout the the trance and the video screens inside the actual building. Um, Mm -hmm. So it was a little different and I kind of liked it done this way, even though I do like the, uh, the phone call voicemail kind of like when you, you know, see those, uh, those murder uh, store art shows like unsolved mysteries and you're Mm -hmm. seeing the font of the, the voicemails or the phone calls like that. That's always interesting. It was a nice little touch, but we were talking about this prior going on a live and we kind of like were thinking, that maybe it wasn't necessarily a person. And I suggested maybe this is in fact tied to the deadline uh, thing we're getting. Um, As we got a little bit of clarity on that, that we'll talk to in a little bit, but perhaps this is just change signalizing that we will see change in NXT. And as the NXT, as we know it right now will change, whether it's going to be a completely different uh, setup, a completely different like look, and things like that. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I have a feeling that the person is more of a symbol and scripts is involved to how we know what a script is. It's more or less a dialect of the narration of a show. Um, 
And if the script itself is going to flip, then the show itself will also, you know, be a little bit more on the chaotic side or, you know, so much. So I'm wondering what kind of everyone else is thinking, uh, but what are your thoughts about scripts? Well, somebody clip both of our versions for later so that way we know what we said this for when it happens later or like my Ava Rain part so we have a memory of it. Um, no, like I was telling you while we were off air, just you made me think about it as well of like not only the change, but from the message when they say my name is written on the walls, I kept thinking when they show us backstage segments on NXT, you see stuff that happened in NXT before and usually from the black and gold era. So just when I see that, it just reminds me of them going back to that. And um, not only that, but the way it sounds very poetic and kind of rhymes and also the name scripts reminds you of scriptures because of HBK. So it just reminds you that maybe the message is coming kind of like from him about the change. So that could be the connection there too. But the way it says like, my name is written on the, wa on the walls. My voice sounds through the halls. And the, like the sound of the halls reminds you of the coaches from like in the PC. You, you hear That's what you hear all the time, the voices of the coaches giving directions. So it just reminds me of back about you saying about the script changing because they're the ones giving you the script, if anything. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it kind of has a connection there. So I'm, I don't know. That's what I thought so far. Plus another thing that I thought was interesting is that the first two promos were calls and the video in the background was outside. Mm -hmm. First it was outside of the arena itself, like in the parking lot. Then we got the entrance and now they're inside the arena. Like the change is kind of making progress, I would say. Yeah, it's over that's time I making felt... its way inside the building. Yeah, yeah, that's how I saw it too. Uh, while I was thinking about it when, when you were telling me that too. So it yeah. kind of made me think of like the progress is like coming, making its way inside NXT. And each week we're getting some kind of progress. So I thought that could be it. And then later on, we got that announcement that HBK is making a statement next week about deadlines. So just maybe think about it. I don't know. Somebody clip yeah. it, please. Hopefully yeah. we got to figure it out. <laughs> and what I like, too, is imagine, because we, we did see a figure in the first two. And yeah. it was somebody who, somebody on the second one, I believe, yeah, spray painted scripts on, uh, I believe, beside the entrance door. Mm -hmm. Um but imagine if we get a graphic where we see the same person uh, spray paint the logo. Because if you look at the NXT logo right now, it is a plain font. It is like a blank canvas. So what happens if someone is painting you a new canvas, so a new identity, so to speak? And that's kind of where I'm getting at. Uh, perhaps NXT as we know it is, you know, and people might say, like, well, it's going to change again. Uh, well, I think this is just a, a stop gap right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, I don't know. Very interested to see. This is uh, definitely something that is capping my interest, so to speak. Um, and this gets us right into a next match or second match of the night. And it is a match that actually exceeded my expectations when I heard about it. And that is Sol Ruka versus Electra Lopez. Um, and I was very intrigued intrigued by this match to begin with but it absolutely like for the most part it was a very i don't want to say convoluted match and wasn't a come like a very it was a very standard match but everything they did they were doing it very well there's meaning to a lot of things there's a couple things that i could nitpick about um but before i do that Nash, like your thoughts on this because i'm sure that you were probably just as impressed as i was about this match yeah, I guess I kept thinking when I saw Soul, I was thinking this match is going to suck because the last time we saw her, it was not great. And then I didn't know who her opponent was until we heard Electra's music because it was new music. So uh, I went into her entrance and then I noticed it was her. When I did, I was like, well, she's still very green. So I was not expecting the best out of her, but I expected some kind of improvement because she'd been off for a few weeks. So I was kind of with low expectations coming into the match already but i feel like the way they did it if you think about it kind of like a routine it, it meshed very well um i did notice so like i told you off air that electra was getting more of a reaction every time she did anything like the crowd was Ooh, wow whatever like you could hear them reacting to her so way uh, some way but with soul whenever she did anything it was nothing and it just shows that I feel like it's a good thing that they should keep the structure of like 
introducing the character before they start wrestling because we got video packages of her doing like workout stuff but we didn't really know her character and i feel like it doesn't help her in the long run because people don't know whether to cheer her or boo her so they don't say anything versus with electra they already know who she is so they already cheer her on because they want her to succeed so i noticed that she didn't get that type of reaction which i hope she did but she didn't though Yes, that loud noise. noise. <laughs> yeah, no, this is one of the, uh, the three things I can nitpick about. And uh, one was Sol Ruka. Um, I believe this was, uh, what, her third match in? Mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing that she needs to do, needs to do right away before anything else, it doesn't matter what you do inside those ropes, you need to develop a relationship with the people around you got to get them on your side. And it doesn't matter what you do as a wrestler. If you can have those people behind you, it just makes anything you choose to do in that ring matter. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, if you don't have them for before you do anything in that rope, you better not mess anything up because then they will get the loudest on you and already you have lost the direction of where you need to get to and you're not putting yourself in a position of any favors um just creating that relationship with the audience whether it's as a good guy or good like as a baby face so to speak mm -hmm. to get them on your side if it's a heel you want them against you but either way you need them and that is the big one um and i really worry for sol ruka if she doesn't do this in the next few matches i fear that they are going to do something and repackage her and do something with her um, so, um, second thing is just more technical. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just a couple things that, you know, just, uh, couldn't believe, uh, you know, just lazy, uh, transitions sometimes, but I mean, that's what I do. Um, I wrestle, so I'm going to always look at it that way. So, um, uh, but either way, like Electra Lopez, I thought she impressed me huge in this match. She looked really tough. She looked really aggressive. Um, I believed in what she was doing. And like you mm -hmm. said, the people responded to her. So I think the, I wonder if, you know, maybe, maybe this is because they'd known her before with Legato del Fantasma, mm -hmm. but either way, she picks up the win against Sol Ruka and gets immediately attacked by uh, Indy Hartwell, kind of as a payback for last week. Uh, Take us away. Indy's kind of like your girl. <laughs> so she is my girl. Yeah. No, new it's something that it, uh what? I was just gonna say a new attitude from Indy Hartwell, too. Yeah. Um, well, I feel it's something that's been kind of brewing for the last couple of weeks, so it's not entirely new, new, but I feel like this just like that part that she needed in her transformation. Because if you notice, she has been picking up a lot of wins and kind of Yep. picking on people in a way i would say i don't want to say it like that but she's what that's what she's done because she kind of picked on a uh, zoe last week and even now she still even though it happened you know why but still she kind of picked on electra because of what happened too but i like that she has that attitude that she's like i'm focusing on myself yeah and i'm doing me this time around and I feel like this is something that she needed to give her some kind of direction because she had like random wins and losses and there was no like real focus on her. And at least we get something going on for her now, which I like. Um, but just, I like that attitude change. I like that she was like, well, you jumped me, so I'm going to jump you now too. Uh, so she has a reason why she did it as well. So it'll be interesting to see uh, perhaps sometimes so we get Indy and Electra. And I think it would be good for Electra to learn from somebody from Indy who has a lot of experience already in the ring. And she knows how to get a reaction from the crowd as well, where there is bueno cheering. So I think it will be good to see them together. Yeah, and uh, I'm very interested not only to see kind of like how they react with each other, their chemistry, uh, but also where the story leads. Because there's not much in terms of detail on other than you jumped me, I jumped you. Why did I want to know more why they are uh, choosing. Like, why did uh, Electric choose to jump her right away? You know, what's the reasoning? Mm -hmm. So I'm very interested to get into that and, like, like salvage that, you know, like, see what kind of where they go next. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Um, and this brings us to a Chase U University promo. 
where we have Andre Chase getting ready for his match against Charlie Dempsey, who uh, I refer to Nathan Dempsey last week a lot because I got things confused, but I'm correcting myself. And a lot is because of the person over there calling me out <laughs> after the show. <laughs> Not during the show, but after the show. Calls me. Yeah, I was nice about it. I did it after. <laughs> yeah, I don't take it. Uh, Sean Cena coming in. I'm not sure if Indy is a heel or a face with the way she's acting recently, even to Roxanne tonight. Yeah, I don't think she's, you know, attacking people negatively. I think yeah. she is very blunt about, you know, what she's doing. Mm -hmm. um, she's honest about it, which is not an, a, a heel quality. Um, but she's definitely not, she's not letting people in mm -hmm. a lot. She's being a little bit more mysterious about her, uh, decisions and her, uh, her ways. So yeah, that was definitely a, a pun there. Uh, mm -hmm. Sean Cena coming in saying, I think a call up for Indy is in the future. I think eventually, but I do think I can see them wanting to build her more as a singles star right mm -hmm. now um i do think that and i don't think it's necessary but it, i wouldn't hate it yeah. i definitely wouldn't hate it but i would also love to see indy hartwell nxt women's champion at some point too same and then our uh apparently look at that pretty emo apparently there's great beer on tap at at our local establishment because they are going emote happy, which you can definitely get now because we are Twitch affiliated. Definitely would not have been able to do that without the support of everyone. So thank you so much. Um, and then we have uh, probably the uh, the culprit of the emotes, but <laughs> who's to say? Uh, but we got Bobby Munson, my brunch, my brunch bust about it, brother. How are you doing? How are you? How's your night? Let us know. Um, but yeah, we have a uh, chase you promo. We have uh, Duke Hudson very willing to be supportive. Understood that last week was a teachable moment when he got sent to the back. Now wants to uh, help Andre lead the charge. Understand that the fight is won and lost in the ring. So he wants to be there. He wants to wave the flag and support for chase you. While Thea is just being the firecracker that she is. <laughs> uh, take us away because I know that you have a soft spot for Thea. I love Thea's energy though. I wish I had it at this point, especially. <laughs> uh, no, I love her energy because I feel like even with the two guys there, my eyes go to her or the way she stands up between them there or stands down, I guess, because she's as small as I am. But like even with her stature, just like, she stands up between all three of them, which I like too. So I I can relate to her in that type of way that like I'm tiny, but people notice me too. Um <laughs> but no, I, I loved the what they did here. I did notice the one they were doing the oh let's do Chase C on three. It was Duke and then I think it was Chase and then Thea on top, and then Duke put his hand on top of Thea's and took it from under Chase before they left. Um, uh, but even then he's like, Well, I learned my ways of like not cheating because it's not the Chase C way, but I'm still gonna go out there and support you. And like I, I, I got taught a lesson with a teachable moment last week, so I thought that was pretty interesting when he said that too. Yeah. Um, your thoughts on Duke Hudson in Chase University? I feel like it was unexpected, but at the same time, not with the timing of Bodhi getting released, I feel like he fits already well. But I feel like at the same time, he's gonna go like in a way not destroy it, but. You know, kind of in, in show Chase that there's different ways. And I feel like, I don't know if they need some type of change, but I feel like he's bringing that change to Chase you in some way or short, shape or form. So. Yeah, I agree. Right now, I'm very skeptical because it seems like he has different, uh, might have a different end game. But at the same time, I do think if there's a commitment um, and if that's what they decide to do, I'm definitely in for it because I think Duke Hudson – Definitely needs something at this point. Um, and I do think this is a right move because Chase U is just getting and getting more popular every episode. Um, so, yeah. Um, and this kind of brings us to a toxic attraction promo minus Gigi Dolan, more of a, another Zoom call between Mandy Rose, who's uh, just at her, at her home, just chilling uh, with uh, JC Jane in a car, stopped, pulled on the highway. 
which I'm glad that she's not doing this while she's driving. But then we see a, uh, a mysterious car behind her, kind of like a cop. We see a siren pulling all over and uh, opens the door, pulls her out. So <laughs> now I know why she got pulled over. She's not wearing her seatbelt. Uh, oh, my God. I mean, maybe she should have because the person who pulled her out was Alba Fire <laughs> and absolutely takes out JC Jane to nobody. Nobody knows what, what happened. But the one person that was absolutely surprised was Mandy Rose, the WWE NXT Women's Champion. Uh, your thoughts on this segment? Because I, I loved, uh, I don't know, I liked it, but it was a little cartoony as well. Yeah, I like I like that there was a different type of scenery. We don't get somebody usually in their car to do something like this. I don't know if it's the horror fan in me, but I was kind of expecting her to be from behind her and just choking her from behind in the car. So I kind of I kept looking at the back seat and then nothing happened. <laughs> um, but I thought it was pretty funny because in the call you see Mandy and it says Mandy Rose under her under her, and then JC says JC Jane. And then when Alba takes that JC Jane, it changes the frame with fire around it. And it says Alba Fire instead. So I like I even within the call, they changed her name while this was happening. Um, but she warns Mandy. She warned JC. She's like, I'm going to take them both out because when I face you, it's going to be that one-on-one -on -one match. So she didn't know better. You were talking about her that she was coming at you. You should have known better than that. A woman of her word. She said she's going to take out Gigi last week, and she does. She's going to take down, out Jane out this week. She does. Yeah. She's coming for Mandy. She's coming for that championship. Be afraid. Be very afraid. One um, so, I mean, I, I do like it. This definitely takes uh, takes me back to uh, kind of just other stories where, you know, in order to get to that, uh, in order to get to that big monster, you got to cut through all the, all the traps. So I like it. Very strategic. Makes Alba, Alba Fire very, very smart, very calculated, and I like this. Sounds like the perfect person to be your next women's champion. Sorry, but, Ed. but who's to say? Um, yeah, that's that's gonna be something new. I'm saying, by the way, uh, gets me out of a lot of trouble. Uh, Sean Cena coming in. I think Alba versus Maddie should main event next week since it's last woman standing. We were about to get to that. <laughs> And you just had to take our surprise away. But no, that, that is true, Sean. Uh, Sean. You uh, you are correct. Uh, it is now known that it's going to be now a last woman standing match. Uh, yeah, another one. Your, your thoughts on uh, another last woman standing match? I think it's also interesting with the timing. And I think something that we talked about um, with Axiom and JD too, how things are like repeating from what happened in the main roster one after the other. So that's interesting, the timing of it. Uh, but I think it just it makes sense with at the end, you know, we have Mandy standing for over a year now as champion. So I think there's, you know, that, that part of like the meaning there behind it. Um, and also, like, not having the ladies to, like, help her out in this type of match when there's not the queue or anything like that, that will be interesting to see as well. So, yeah, I'm very looking forward to it. I do hope as well that it's the main event and they give it all, enough time to really show up these girls and hopefully get a new champion. Yeah. Um, and this takes us to Happy Hour, which is, I think, our favorite over at our local establishment. I mean... Who doesn't like happy hour? I mean, you got the deals. You got, oh, no. See, see that's the thing. Happy hour at our local establishment could be anything. You know, it could mm -hmm. be, you know, drink specials. It could be food specials. It could be specials on wrestling. It could be whatever it is. But it's just going to be one hell Ole. of a good old time. Ole. Don't tell me you put it on loop. <laughs> I did put it on loop. <laughs> I knew it. Because I messed up the first time, so I wanted to make sure I got it this time. Um, but yeah, uh, the we see uh, JBBJ with uh, Fallon Henley right there as the bartender going in, and we find out a little bit more about the details of what that envelope was as Kiana James comes in with her assistant, her secretary, say... Um, and apparently this envelope established a deal 
or a business proposal for Keanu mm -hmm. James to acquire the establishment that JBBJ and Fallon own, more so Fallon owning mm -hmm. or working at. I don't even know what the, the right way to say this one is. I'm assuming owning because she's getting the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So she can turn it into an apartment building. And uh, yeah, you're so just, and I'm going to let you kind of go through this because you paid attention to the, these segments a lot better than I do. So <laughs> take us away because. Uh, I can yeah. tell. No, I just like, it's something like I said, even last week, I, I missed the comedy part of it with JBBJ. So I'm glad we got that end of it here with, is it Briggs? I keep forgetting which one's which. Sorry, I'm terrible at their names. But um <laughs> no, I, it happens to us all. <laughs> no, I'm used to JBBJ, so I keep I can't separate who's who at this point. It's just JBBJ is both of them. I um, think Brooks Jensen is the tall guy, and I know. And uh, sorry, Brooks Jensen is the the one with the kind of the mullet, and the then, curly hair. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, he was the one going back and forth and like supporting Kiana because he likes the assistant. So I thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, and I like how Fallon just goes, "I'm not gonna sell this bar." Like. Uh, my uncle helped me play pool over there, and I play over there with my dad, the the darts, and I was eating over here in the corner with my grandpa. So just that end of it, we never really got like a history for her mm -hmm. in the her local establishment. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to see that a little bit of history behind it. But um, yeah, it was we don't do cool. homework at OLE. Homework is not our style. Mm. Um, not your style. But anyway, yeah, uh, no. No. all right. Yeah, I'm proud of you. I never <laughs> used to do these. You know, progress. Yeah. Um, but no, I like that they gave us a little bit of history about Fallon as well as a character there too, a little bit. And she didn't say how much it was, but it, it was on top of the deal. And Briggs is the one just telling her, he's like, yeah, well, I support you. And Josh is like, no, don't, you know. Don't support her, support Fallon. So I like that the, the chemistry they have between them. And I miss them both like being on screen like this. Yeah. And uh, we didn't know the name of the secretary before, but we have found out that is Giovanna Ebernio. Or we sense like a lot of people. Yeah. Very, uh, it's a lot in a name. I found it. Anyway, move on. <laughs> okay. I mean, the ego coming yes off this start right now Jeez. yes what are we <laughs> gonna do with you nothing <laughs> i know uh anyway this takes us to their next matchup which is hank walker against Ch uh channing stacks lorenzo um which i thought was i know i was very impressed with the match between lopez and so ruka but I think this match takes it in the match that I just did not expect it to be as good as it was. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a very good match. I feel stacks every single time is just getting better and more fluid and more polished in that ring. And I love it. I hope that when D'Angelo comes back, they maybe go after that little tag titles, but Oh my God is these guys are going to be something to watch out for down the road. Um, Stax does pick up the uh, the win here, um, but a really good showing from Hank Walker, who I think has definite potential to be a player in NXT moving forward. Um, yeah, just uh, your uh, your opinions of Stax and uh, Walker, and uh, how did you enjoy this match? I mean, it wasn't. I feel like Soul and and Electra did better for me at least. But it wasn't a bad match. I like it that at the same time, both of the guys got to showcase themselves. And I liked how they kept stacks on TV, even with Tony's injured, just to still kind of build them up in a way. And we used to see them. Don't forget about them, even while Tony's injured. So I like that he's still getting, even though they're like random matches in a way, but they're still building him up and showcasing him. He's getting more experience. So it's nice to see him and still in the ring every week. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm very curious on how the progression of Stax is going to go. Um, what lies behind him now, or lies in front of him now? Um, do we see maybe a slow rise towards Wesley and then North American Championship? I would not be upset if this eventually leads to Stax becoming the next North American Champion. 
I want was to have it for a little bit, but I do see that. I see what you mean, though. Even if it's like a, yeah, like even if it's a short rain, it would be nice to see something. Um, also, I'm just going to say, like, I love kind of the father son kind of dynamic here, even though it's more like mentor student kind of thing. But like, we see that support from Tony D'Angelo. Um, he's not there to hurt stacks, he's there to teach them lessons. And it's come very similar to, uh, I think, uh, Chase. He has his teachable moments, but, you know, D'Angelo has his challenges. And, you know, if he wants to be the new head, you know, so to speak, you, you got to be able to fight. Um, speaking of someone who uh, knows that they have to fight but chooses to talk instead, we have Grayson Waller announcing that up next is a Grayson Waller effect with Braun Breaker and Vaughn Wagner, which – has to be entertaining, right? Von Wagner. Um, sure. So, uh, yeah. Actually, and the segment was actually was quite enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have Grayson Waller kind of just show up the tweets about how Von Wagner in the title match, are you serious? Just people like shocked that Wagner, uh, Von Wagner's in the match. It wasn't maybe Apollo. It wasn't J.D. McDonough. It wasn't maybe him wasn't Carmelo Hayes. Um, so, yeah, seeing uh, other people put uh, be put out there was interesting. Um, but also seeing uh, Von Wagner and Braun Breaker kind of spewing some uh, words between each other about, especially being second generation. Um, what stood out to this? Uh, what stood out for you in this promo? And uh, did, you, did you like it or do you not like it? I liked it, and I'll give you credit. I know you didn't mention it, but I'll give you credit because I said it to you off air anyway. Um, I did like when they showed up the tweet, like mentioning Carmelo. It's like, oh, kind of like Carmelo didn't get the title match, but Vaughn did. And it just reminded me what you said. I think it was last week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, when the match happened, and he's the one that hit Wesley, and you said, well, this is for him to go against Wes and then go face Braun afterwards. So it just it rem reminded me of that because... It's like, oh, we're talking about Vaughn right now, but it's like kind of we don't want you to forget that Carmelo could be another one coming up soon. So <laughs> I thought about that when the tweet showed up on screen. So credit to you for that. Um, but yeah, I, I like the front one. By the way, people, clip you can clip it if you want for later. Huh. That's the only time we're doing this. <laughs> 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 um, no, I like to. Uh, Braun said to Apollo, he's like, oh, Apollo, I said your name. You happy now? Like I kind of mentioned you. Uh, when well, he was naming the people that are going after him. And another point was when Vaughn said, oh, I'm second generation to you, and it's not just you, but I didn't use it to get in the door. Yeah. And I like that part of it, when he brought it up, because it doesn't get seen. You don't see it often from Vaughn, but they actually keep mentioning that Breaker is from the Steiner family. But you yeah. don't see it often from Vaughn. So it's interesting that they pointed that out on screen. And that part when Braun just hits Stone with the desk and the table and the way Grace, I love the uh, reaction from Grayson because he's on his phone on the opposite side, but he sees it from his camera and he just turns around and has that facial expression like, what the heck, that came out of nowhere. Uh, but I love seeing that between them though. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, Braun Breaker made a fan out of me when he took Robert Stone's head and just smacked it over the table. Oh, Amazing. man. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> so jealous. The only time I'm going to say I'm jealous of Braun Breaker because he gets to <laughs> physically assault Robert Stone. Um, but, yeah, uh, very interesting that they didn't actually come to blows, even though that's kind of why they got up. Uh, there's that invitation from uh, Braun saying, hey, if you want to do something about it, do it. And then get up and then just kind of a stare off. And then eventually we have Grace Waller pop up kind of in the middle there. Um, so, yeah. But the line of the night was uh, in that promo. It has to be uh, when Braun said Apollo's name. He's like, Apollo, said your name. You happy? <laughs> uh, absolutely terrific. But, yeah. Um, other than maybe them just establishing that they're going to fight late at some point, just a little bit of comedy and a little bit of shots mm -hmm. fired, but not, nothing over the top, nothing special. We uh, then get to another uh, promo with Wesley again signaling that, yes, he is going to have that contract signing coming up um, with Carmelo Hayes to then have their match. Uh, I believe it's, what, next week or two weeks? 
And the, the contract signing is next week in the title yeah, match after. Yeah, Matt, two weeks um, for that North American Championship. So um, I know, uh, Sean Senior, you talk, you're saying about this being the main event. I would actually love to see that as the opener because I think Carmelo Hayes and Wesley are going to put on a clinic. And I, oh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to outperform them, I think. Um, but at the same time, if it's Alba getting that championship, yes, she deserves that main event spot. Um, yeah, so good promo, but nothing too too much of relevancy. Not not a lot, but uh, it's nice to see Wesley giving some promo time, getting that you know shine. Mm -hmm. um, well deserved. We then get to a, just a little bit of a warm up thing between Axiom and JD getting ready for this match, and then this then is brought to us to a Cora Jade promo kind of signaling a uh, up-and-coming confrontation match of some sort with Wendy Chu. Um, I know you're happy to see Cora Jade back on. Uh, you're happy to see Wendy Chu kind of be in there. Uh, take us through your mind of what you think about Cora Jade versus Wendy Chu. I just I feel like they didn't know what else to do with either one of them. And you're just like, might as well have you know, Wendy help out uh, for us last week. So just you know, let's have to, I didn't feel like there's a sense of direction for it right now, so I'll wait to see what happens on that end of it. But uh, I like the points of like Cora brought up with like she said, Oh, you're saving somebody you don't know because we never really had an on screen interaction between for us and uh, Wendy. And she said, Oh, you have a friend complex, like you always have to have a friend with you. And going back, it you know, you can see that happening because we had Wendy with so many people recently and so many kind of partners as well. And she's like, I don't want you to make a friend at my expense. And I like the way they highlighted the promo uh, with Cora because not only does it give you more of that heel Cora that I'm, I'm enjoying so far, but maybe it'll give some kind of depth into why they're facing with each other because it just feels kind of random right now to me. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I'm very interested to see kind of, again, like, yeah, just like, you know, I said earlier, kind of where this goes and how this develops. Um I do think we're going to see a little bit more aggression out of Wendy Chu than we did out of Roxanne Perez. Not a knock on Roxanne, but I do think Wendy Chu is just that much more experienced, that much more uh, comfortable in the ring as a performer than maybe Roxanne. But Roxanne definitely has that future that I think she's going to be a star uh, down the road. Um, but I'm also very interested to see how this propels Cora to also, mm -hmm. you know, take it to that next level. And I think she's at that point where she definitely needs to. Um, so very interesting. Um, and then we get to uh, just a little quick clip of Apollo Crews, basically calling out Braun Breaker. We know Apollo wants Braun at some point for that championship. Um, I really believe. Um, I'm going to say this. I would love to see NXT do an el elimination chamber. I think they fun. have the perfect amount of people going mm -hmm. after that uh, NXT championship right now where an elimination chamber match for the NXT title would be really cool. Yeah. It feels like it makes sense. It's something that we pointed out like last week, all the people that are targeting Braun almost all at once because we have JD still hanging in there. Vaughn at the moment, Apollo, even Grayson kind of took a shot or during his segment as well. Like I can take that championship from you anytime. And then we have Apollo as well. So he does have a number of people that are kind of like lined up already. And mm -hmm. plus we have Carmelo kind of like got teased in a way, but he hasn't really said anything at the moment because he's focused on Wes. So he does have a lot of people lined up at the moment. So it would make sense to do something like that. Yeah, he definitely has a target on his back. Um, so, yeah. Um, and this takes us straight to the uh, JD McDonough versus Axiom, Axiom match. Um, I think easy to say. Our match of the night, yeah, not not even a question, and that's not because anything else was bad. This was just that good tonight. These two have an amazing chemistry, and absolutely fast paced. The reversals were great. The sequences were just fantastic. Very fluid. Nothing seemed out of place. And then we get to the finish, and it's another. Referee stoppage, but done a little bit of a different way. And it seemed like the referee stopped it more because he wanted to prevent an injury. Whereas the last two times we've seen it, 
it's because an injury has happened. Mm-hmm. And yeah, unfortunately, it was legit injury. So I think they're using this as a way to help the referee maybe look a little bit smarter by protecting the athlete a little bit. However, J.D. McDonough is flat out saying he knows the definition of pain um, as he pretty much worked on the, the knee, basically took the knee and just bent it a completely different way. A leg should not need to bend that way in any way. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to let it kind of take this to you, your thoughts on this match. And I have to ask, because I know you're not the world's biggest J.D. McDonough fan, <laughs> but is he coming around in your opinion, in your opinion, because all he's doing is having great matches. He's having great promos with it. All he's doing is putting out good quality stuff right now. Yeah, this one I really liked it. Like you said, like the timing of it was really well done. To me, the, I, I sold this to myself. that This is like a submission showdown because I feel like this is how it started. <laughs> And those submissions were incredible. Like, even visually, I couldn't keep my eyes out. Um, but I like the part where the... Um, I forgot what the move was called exactly. But the way he had Axiom, Axiom was on his shoulders, and he had to lift up his shoulders uh, because he kind was like getting a special. Yeah, he was getting counted by the referees. Like, first one shoulder, then the other shoulder. And then for the third one, he put his neck up so that way his shoulders were not on the mat. And the way he showed off his strength to get up from there and the way the crowd reacted to it was just amazing to see. Um, and even, like, the ending, the way he, that JD was just stretching his leg, it was just visually incredible to watch. Um, it just reminded me when they did that spot with Alexa with, like, her, with her joints. So it kind of looked mm-hmm. nasty at first visually. Uh, so that part of it, I just didn't like how I understand why, but I didn't like the rep stoppage when we got it two weeks in a row now. It's like, yeah, we got it with our truth. It was the opener. And then we had it here towards more like the end of the show. And it's just like, we don't need things happening twice in a row, even for different reasons. And I get why they're doing it with JD to put him as that. Like, I know what pain is really like, because I'm giving it to you. But at the same time, why have two referee stoppages two weeks in a row? Just like you could have figured out another ending for it, perhaps. But I feel like visually this was really well done from JD's end of just giving a clinic to everybody that shows up against them now. Yeah, even if uh, Axiom uh, just verbalized I quit like right after that and the referee just calls it, I don't think that does anything negative to Axiom at all. Um, In fact, it just – I mean, he's also the same guy that – made Ilya Dragunov pass out and like choked him out. And Ilya Dragunov is a tough man. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. He's a Russian. Russians are just tough people. <laughs> you do not want to mess with a Russian flat out. They're bad. And they're just, they're tough. All right. They're a different breed. Um, so the fact that JD McDonough has been, able to establish the fact that he can manipulate a joint. He could, you know, bend, you know, a joint in so many different ways. He can also be vicious and attack you in ways that you don't even think are possible. Mm-hmm. I think that just shows you just how sadistic he can be. And I know this era of NXT is not allowing him to be like, kind of like a Randy Orton type, uh, like vicious kind of like, yeah, like how he was in like the early 2000, like 2005, six, like, you know, mm-hmm. that time right before he was starting to establish himself, like after the legend killer or even like, you know, the Wayland mercies of the world. Um, but I like the fact that he is somebody that is almost becoming someone you, you fear when you have to get in the ring with. So he's that mental mind game, kind of like mankind, but without the deranged, just with the sadistic, I mm-hmm. think. Um, but yeah, good stuff. And even grabbing the microphone saying, no, like this isn't Torrance on whatever. That's just a severe strain. Yeah. Believe me. I know pain. Um, so I like that. It's good stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. hopefully this is, hopefully this kind of brings him to like an open challenge where we just get to see him and Ilya kind of just go at it again. Because I think that is far from over, but. I'm also going to say, if you're watching an NXT live event, just like a house show, and they give you these two guys, and they get like 20 minutes, do not get up. Just watch <laughs> these guys, mm-hmm. Axiom versus JD McDonough, worth the price of a mission. 
And then we get to uh, a slight promo between the Creeds and Damon Kemp, kind of just, you know, previewing that they, uh, I think uh, Brutus will get five minutes with Damon Kemp Mm -hmm. later tonight. And that's pretty much what we get to. But right before that, we do get that deadline promo with the announcement from Shawn Michaels himself. Um, Very interesting. Very interested Mm -hmm. to see kind of just what deadline is going to be about. I have a viewpoint that it could be the new takeover. Um, what do you think deadline is? Yeah, to me, when I see the name, it just, like, even by the name itself, it just gives you, like, the end of something. Mm-hmm. So it just, like, it makes you wonder if it's the end of, like, the way we see NXT as, at the moment and there's some kind of change coming. And like we said earlier, connecting it back to maybe the scripts promo because it seems like there's just a change coming in there as well. So maybe there's a connection in there uh, with both things. I'm kind of thinking now, can, uh, kind of as we kind of put this out uh, and say it, when you have like a book report and there's a deadline to hand it in, what happens if that's kind of like the deadline of the old script? So as soon as this deadline hits, there's that's like the script as we know it is done. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I wonder if like this has to be, I just think this has to be connected in some way. Yeah. Um, and I'm very curious. They're doing this very well. I love the graphic where the deadlines kind of flock like an old school clock where they just flip and you're seeing names. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, very interesting. I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to represent the names of the people that are going to, f- you know, run the ship of NXT moving mm-hmm. forward. Um, very interesting. And this kind of now takes us to... Uh, Creed and Kemp for the five minutes, which doesn't last five minutes. Yeah. Don't think it needed to last five minutes. <laughs> I think this match just needed to do one thing, and that is let Creed beat the living piss out of Damien Kemp. Yeah. And that's about, what, the two minute and 40, 40 second? That's exactly, that's exactly what we got. Mm-hmm. Creed absolutely tattoos Camps back in different shades with a steel <laughs> chair to the fans. Like, just they just loved it. That's all they wanted. That's all that's needed. I believe this was closure mm-hmm. with Damon Kemp. Would you agree? Yeah. Uh, the only thing maybe think about is like, what are they really going to do um, at any point soon with uh, Roddy? Because he, we haven't seen him since the hospital scene. So that's what yeah. I thought about. <laughs> see um, this kind of goes in now we we're talking about if Scripps is a person could it be Roddy if it was a person makes sense okay somebody from the past I don't know maybe it's Bobby and uh, maybe it's Bobby Fish coming back aligning himself with Roddy who knows? I don't know. We can get in this game, but I do think we believe that it's going to be the change of NXT as we know it, right? Yeah, just no yeah. Bobby, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do have a Veer and Sang a sighting as they are up in that mm-hmm. kind of little corner uh, balcony. Uh, the Eagle's Nest, that's what we're calling it. No, that's what you and Ed call it. The sticking. <laughs> But uh, they're they're watching on, so it looks like we're previewing a potential uh, Creed Brothers versus Fear and Sanga, which, mm-hmm. okay, uh, I have a lot of time for this because it, it this now gives us a new challenge for the Creeds. So, yeah, I, I do believe that Damon Camp and the Creeds closed moving forward mm-hmm. now. Um, we do have a promo bringing back who we believe Dominic Dijak is what they're going to call him, I think. Could be. We know T-Bar is not going to be anymore. That mask mm-hmm. is being burnt alive. Mm-hmm. Could be Dominic Di- Dijakovic. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do you, when do you think we'll see him? Do you think it's going to be whenever uh, that deadline is? or? Yeah, I think it would make sense for a deadline. Plus, I was wondering if they will still call him Dominic because we have Dominic Mysterio and you know how they are with their names still. Um, 
But yeah, I just I think deadline will be interesting depending who he's going against. Perhaps after that person has their match, he could come out. So maybe that will be something that we could see pretty soon. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We got a raid. Heal Kevin. Oh, man, I was going to raid you. So I went <laughs> to raid you last night, and you ended right as I did. Brother, I am so, so happy. Thank you so much. Anybody who has an opportunity, go check out Heal Kevin. He is absolutely amazing, bringing me balls of energy. Your Ravens kicked the living tar out of my Saints, but, I mean, we allowed it pretty even or easily. So, uh, yeah, um, we are now – then uh, we got one of my favorite names, Barry Monkey 99 <laughs> Uh, or EC3, instead of controlling his own nerve, he'll be no. right. No. Uh, <laughs> but in brackets, he's like, I don't really believe that. I think he's I just throwing not. out of potential. You never know. Um, and, wait, if I got it correctly, Barry has been on making an impact for like a couple of weeks. So thank you, Barry, for coming on tonight, too. Yes. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, Heal Kevin. Brother, we got to get you on one of our shows. We got to, sh we got to, Shoot the scripts uh, mm -hmm. sometime about pro wrestling. Got to get your takes. Um, so we'll definitely talk more. But thank you so much for the love. Thank you so much for the support. And, uh, yeah, that was very nice of you. Um, so, yeah. Um, where are we? Yeah, I guess we're getting right, right to the main event almost. But we were talking just a little bit about T-Bar or Dominic Dijakovic, Dominic Dijak. Um, but, yeah. Either way, I think it's just great that uh, we're going to see him back in NXT. I think that's really it. Um, before we get to our main event match, we do have one last segment where we see Indy Hartwell running into uh, Roxanne in the back. Pretty much Roxanne's trying to make friends. That's where Indy's like, no, this is where you got it wrong. You cannot make it in this business getting what you want. And this conversation kind of proves the fact that I'm right when I'm saying I'm betting on myself. And when you do that, you got you can't be. This isn't all. This isn't a sh uh, business for friends. Um, but kind of your thought on this, and maybe we we're getting a little bit of tension between uh, Roxanne and Indy, perhaps. Well, I think something that we could do after Electric is just after what happened with Electric tonight. I feel like it makes sense for Indy and Electra maybe next week or the week after. And maybe Roxanne after that. Um, but it's just like going back to that line that Indy told her. She said, it's a, a business that we don't have any friends in this business. And it just reminds me back of like Persia. And I feel like ever since the release of Persia, uh, the way it's been portrayed on TV, Indy hasn't had any friends and she's trying to find herself. And she's in that process of identifying herself as herself and not having anybody with her. So it makes sense the way she was talking to Roxanne about not having friends and kind of making it on your own and standing up for yourself and things like that that she kept pointing out to Roxanne. And Roxanne just looked visibly upset by what Indy was saying. But I feel like it's Indy's not a heel per, per se. I feel like she's just finally focused on herself and focused on what she wants. So that's yeah. why I like about her character now, which is something that she needed. Yeah, Um Needless to say, I love the fact that they're almost, I don't want to say retooling, but they're kind of re-establishing who these women are. And I think that's what the, a great thing is about the, the vision right now. It seems like we're getting a little bit of, I don't want to say personality, but we're definitely getting some direction with everyone. And because of that, now we're able to understand who they are. And again, I go back, this is why it's so important for Sol Ruka right now. Because if she doesn't have that, I do believe she's going to be lost in the shuffle. And that's not good when we know how how comp and competitive this division is going to get. This is going to be a one hell of a division uh, in, in just a little bit. So once we get kind of these feuds starting to settle and starting to go and starting to brew, watch out. The women's division of NXT is going to blow the roof up a lot of people and their expectations. Um, and needless to say, great transition in our main event for the Women's Tag Team Championships. We have Tana Chance and Caden Carter. Got it right this time, so you know I'm bringing my A game. <laughs> it's Nikita Lyons, Zoe Stark, the challengers. 
And they absolutely had a great match. Again, the main event of NXT is absolutely smashing it out of the park. A great match. I know we were saying we probably liked uh, their match, uh, the first match a little bit better, but I loved kind of how this went. I told you, if Mm -hmm. something was to happen after the match, Mm -hmm. this makes it just great in my opinion. Um, And before we get that, because I'll allow you to talk about it, but just take us through your head and your and what you thought about this match. No, I really loved it. I just the pacing of it and the way that KC Squared has just been incredible to watch the way they have grown together as a team on screen and their double team moves. I definitely love them. Um, but yeah, just this was incredible to watch. And this is something that even I was saying, not only in my review when I wrote it, but I said we said it on screen too. It just you saw that aggression from Zoe for the past couple of weeks since losing the titles and the match. So I figured she was going to turn on Nikita in some way, shape, or form. I think it would have been even more interesting if Nikita had turned with her as well. Uh, but I just expect at least Zoe to turn. But either way, the match itself was incredible. I kind of just expected in a way of Nikita to get pinned just because I feel like it would have ignited Zoe even more to say, like, you lost us the match. It wasn't me. Mm-hmm. So that's the part that I was kind of interested in when Zoe got pinned instead uh, for the match itself. And then having her turn on Nikita the way she did, I felt like I could see it happening the moment they came by because the referee came with the titles. get And they were, he, they were gonna, he was going to give it to Casey Squared. And Nikita and Zoe just came by and grabbed them. Nikita gave hers to katana and then she kind of waited for a moment after she did she did and she was kind of looking at the camera at the same time while it was happening while zoe took a little bit more time to almost hand it out uh, to kaden but before she did she hit uh nikita with the championship casey square just ran out of the uh, out of the ring as well as this was happening because they're like well she has a title in her hands and after she turned on nikita she threw the title outside to uh, kaden kaden just grabbed it but I thought it was interesting that even as the good girls, they saw her with the championship. They just run the heck off. They didn't even help Nikita. So I thought that was interesting as well. But this is something that I kept thinking about of the way she was being so aggressive and Nikita was the one calming her down for the last couple of weeks and being that mindset of her bringing her back to like, not now, just take this aggression when the match happens kind of situation. And we saw her doing it not only in the ring, but backstage as well. And it's just something that I kept thinking about while I was rewatching it, while I wrote my review as well. So I kept thinking, to me, this is Zoe turning, and this is not only was the match great, but I felt it made the match even greater to see that at the end as well. So I I loved it from beginning to end. Like I like I said, I loved the first match more. I feel like I have more time, more depth to it. But no knock on this match though, because it felt incredible to watch as well. Yeah, and again, like, the one thing we got in this match was a direction of where to go next. Um, And I love the fact that this is heating up a Zoe Stark versus Nikita Lyons feud. I think that's just absolutely great. And I think they kind of learned their lesson when they kind of rushed it between Roxana Perez and uh, Cora Jade. I think they actually got it right with Nikita Lyons and with Zoe Stark. And I think they have the right people to do it with. I think this definitely has that vibe of, okay, the, this is a top feud in NXT. And and I think it's going to be great. And I think a heel Zoe Stark is going to be absolutely amazing mm-hmm. for this division. Um, and I, you definitely can tell that she is the, uh, she's the number one right now. I know Mandy Rose is a champ, but this is definitely, it seems like, just kind of like when Bailey was champion, we all knew that was her division. When Asuka was champion, it was her division. When Paige was champion, it was her division. I do think this is Zoe's division right now. She's probably the one who's helping the girls a lot at the PC and things like that. So this is her time to run, like pretty much be the captain of the ship. So it's going to be very interesting to see where she takes uh, this now. And, uh, I'm very interested to see how Nikita Lyons uh, prevails out of this one. So, uh, yeah, very curious, very interested, but a great, great main event with a great segment. And to answer the question when you're like, I don't understand, uh, or you didn't, you're 
not maybe not understand, but like the fact that KC didn't help. She did try to take a swing at one of them <laughs> with the title, and they kind of just said, "No, bitch, I'm out of here." Uh, <laughs> um, but that's also something KC has been, or KC Square has been doing. If it doesn't involve them, mm -hmm. they just back out. Um, we saw with Seth Rollins and Raw last night, and it's not a bad thing that if they've already done their thing, they already won their match, mm -hmm. they did what they had to do, and I don't hold it against them. This was between Nikita and uh, Zoe. Let them deal with it. Uh, so, yeah, just take our titles, and we're just going to do <laughs> that. Um, but, yeah. But uh, speaking of, uh, you know, Taking a step back, let's take a step back now to find out what you, the natural Asher Bizarro gives tonight's star or big star natural rating of NXT. What is it? Oh gosh, it's like it wasn't bad. So just like I don't want to give, I don't know if I want to give it five stars, but I feel like there was nothing bad out of it. So I don't know if I should stick to five stars or do it like a four point five. <laughs> but there was nothing like particularly bad about it. I liked everything, though. So I guess I'll give it a five. Ooh, there you go. A five-star show tonight. NXT coming to you from the natural star, Astro Pizarro. Um, but before we get to where people can find us, what we have coming up, we got to say some thank yous. We got to say some thank yous to our sponsor down below. You see it in the corner under uh, me and you see that barcode under Astrid those are our friends at Rogue Energy and if you go to rogueenergy.com you can check out their inventory that has a lot of cool stuff whether it's a starter kit some cool shakers you know some swag as you can see maybe this hat Rogue Energy right there as I nicely have I like it it's a good fit um, and they are also now selling cans of their energy and uh, you can get a lot of their great stuff over at rogue energy um and if you use that promo code ole pods yeah that's right five star term because i give rogue energy five stars but if you use that promo code ole pods you save 10 percent off your order and that is nice i mean we're getting to that season people where it's better to give than to receive so maybe you have that friend who just wants to, uh, you know, change the way that they uh, take in supplements. What better way than to go rogue? Maybe give them one of those nice rogue energy uh, uh, drinks in the can. You know, they're pushing that, so we got to push that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, OLE pods, 10% off your order. Great stuff. Uh, just ask Mel Ball Collins, who absolutely puts these flavors out there. She's just absolutely loves them is impressed so much by the taste um amazing um i i still have yet to get my starter pack but you know which one i'm trying to, I'm, I'm really curious i need to go the black cherry that is the one i'm looking so much forward to so hopefully hopefully this is not like one of those bad experiences of meeting your I idols hopefully <laughs> I love um but yeah also, I want to say thank you to everyone who's uh, taking their time out of their night to come say hi, to get involved in our chat. People like the Sean Cena, people like the heel Kevin coming in and helping us out. People like the Barry Monkey 99, the Turnbuckle Studios, the Video Bro Bobby Munson, even the powers to be at our local establishment, that Canadian dude, Andre C., Ed, Joe. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And, uh, We got the Chainsaw 86 coming in. Man, why does everyone that I'm choosing, I'm thinking about rating, ends up coming over here? But hello, mm -hmm. Chainsaw. How are you? We were just ending. But uh, let us know. Let us know how you're doing. But, uh, oh, and uh, Dare Amazing. How how can we do a show about NXT without Dare Amazing? We just can't. That is good. Good, good. Uh, but Astrid, let us know where we can find you. Let us know what you have going on. Uh, so Thursday, I got making an impact with Cody. 
and then my NXT review with Women's Wrestling Talk comes on on the weekend. And if I can, I'll do the watch along with Carl on Monday. Finally, I get to do a show with Carl again. Um, but yeah, and then I'll be here with you again next week for taking over. And just if you go to my YouTube channel, my Billy Starks interview is there. And my second episode of Ladies Wrestling Showcase is there. Uh, Mel and I talk about the women's PWI. And yeah, we have something coming up for the third one. Uh, we're planning out a guest uh, with the next topic that we have. So I think it'll be interesting to see how... Um, how it goes, if anything. But yeah, uh, I said if, Carl, because I wasn't sure if you were still doing it because of your job. But if you can confirm you're doing it, then I'm doing it. Just saying. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's it for the moment. How about you, sir? <sighs> Ew. Not my fault. You told me you, you didn't know if you were working or not. So You're just starting some fights everywhere you go, aren't you? Uh, you can find me on the Twitter, Chris Parrish. You can find me on the Twitch at the Chris Parrish. For some of you did check me out today, and I very much appreciate it. You can also follow me on Instagram at Chris.Parish. Why is there a dot? Because somebody already took it. Some of the beaches, as I say. Uh, but where you can see me is definitely at our local establishment, Twitch. Dot com slash our local establishment, where you can see me every Tuesday alongside this one. The natural, the one who gets everything right, or else she's going to hurt me. Uh, <laughs> Asher Pizarro taking over every Tuesday uh, at 10, 10 p.m. Eastern, 8, 10 Mountain. Yes, I know, Andre. I know I said 8, 10, 18. You're like, what? Don't you mean Mountain? No, because where I live, it's 8, 10 every time. That is what ET stands for, right? Every time. And... Uh, and uh, apparently you're just getting fair enough more today being said. Thank you both. Thank you, Carl. Mm -hmm. Very much appreciate it. Very much happy and very happy to see you and Joe back together at Turnbuckle Studios, how it should be. If you ask me, it's nice to see buddies come together at our, our local establishment. Um, yeah, then every Sunday, so you can see me and my busting brother, Bobby Char or Bobby Munson. I know Bobby Sharp's been on my mind, pissing me off, right? We have heel Kevin coming in, made me think about the heel I took out of Bobby Sharp. Yeah, Bobby Munson. Bobby Sharp, who? You took him out. Yeah, I took him out. Yeah, Bobby Munson, I won't take out unless it's for a nice little uh, beverage at our uncle stuff. I'll take Bobby Munson out for one of those. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, you can see us busting out every Sunday at uh, about the one o'clock, one o'clock ish. On the on the Eastern time, um, a little different now because we're on different time uh, time scales now. He's an hour ahead of me. I got that extra day to chill, so yeah, very cool. I'm trying to find somebody to raid now because everyone I was trying to is just popping over here. <laughs> um, so I think who I'm gonna choose? I think if everyone here is gonna watch some NXT, I think I might even uh, raid another fellow NXT pod. So I'm going to raid NXT or up NXT podcast right now. And for everyone who is watching maybe over on Astrid's Twitch right now, uh, I know you probably will not be uh, going straight there. You'll still be watching this. So we're going to end the show still normally how we normally go. But for anybody watching here at our local establishment or anybody at uh, my Twitch watching the old, OLE one, you'll be rated to up NXT podcast. So please show them the only way, show them some love, show them support, introduce yourself. Now that should be going right now. So anybody else sticking around, we appreciate that. And uh, we'd just like to say, have a great night. Pull up a stool next time we're on because it's a happy hour everywhere we go. And you're always welcome. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Bye. Everyone is watching me when I'm coming